gentleman yields back, Mr. Corbello. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary, for being here with us today. Uh, as we were working uh, towards this uh, reauthorization, uh, I collaborated with Chairman Klein, Chairman Rokita, and my colleague from uh, Florida, uh, Ms. Wilson, uh, to see how we could support English language learners uh, through this legislation. Under No Child Left Behind, there were very rigid, uh, unfair, in my opinion, standards used uh, to evaluate English language learners. Uh, as you know, I represent Miami-Dade County, South Florida, where we have a large ELL population. And a lot of these kids were being counted out after one year. Their teachers and their schools were being punished. So one of our priorities was to bring some relief, not just to these students. We want to continue counting them without counting them out, but also to the teachers who spend hours and hours with these kids and to the schools who dedicate so many resources to support them. Can you talk to me a little bit about uh, how the department uh, is interpreting our language with regards to English language learners and if a relief is coming to these um, states, school districts, and schools soon. This is an extremely important area. You know, I, th I think in many ways the fate of our education system is bound up with how we serve our highest need students. And we have a, a rapidly growing population of English learners across the country. And we've got to do a better job as, as a country uh, ensuring that English learners have the opportunity to get the academic skills that they need uh, and also have the opportunity to get the language skills that they need. Uh, as, we, as we go forward with implementation, we are gathering feedback and input from uh, the community of educators who are focused on English learners as well as organizations that have advocated for English learner students. That will be their input will help to drive what goes into the regulations and guidance. As we go into the negotiated rulemaking process on assessments, one of the key issues will be uh, the participation of English learners in the assessment system. Um, we look forward to the negotiators uh, tackling that issue. Uh, we think there are some great opportunities in the Every Student Succeeds Act. Three quickly, uh, the opportunity to focus on growth. Uh, one of the weaknesses, I think, of No Child Left Behind was the focus exclusively on proficiency. Uh, we've got the opportunity with ESSA implementation for states to look at the growth of English learners as part of their accountability system. We have the requirement for states to look at English language proficiency uh, as part of their uh, systems of accountability. We have the requirement for states to focus on the needs of English learners who are also students with disabilities, and a population that has often been underattended to. And we have the opportunity to focus attention on long-term else, uh, students who ha have been in the, the schools for a long time but still haven't required, acquired the language skills that they need. So I think the law will help focus attention here. Uh, we already have begun working with states on, on uh, providing technical assistance in this area as they think about how to integrate growth into their accountability systems and certainly look forward to working with you on this issue. So you can assure me today that as a result of our uh, reauthorization, uh, you foresee in the immediate future more flexibility, uh, more uh, latitude uh, for schools and teachers and districts to work with, uh, with this uh, unique population. Yeah, I think, I think states will, ha will have good flexibility and an opportunity to uh, focus on the needs of English learners uh, more intensely than some states have in the past. And can you tell me briefly, since we have a little over a minute left, uh, with, uh, regarding the Im implementation of the Direct Student Services Program, which promises to expand school choice and, again, bring more uh, flexibility and options uh, for students uh, who have the capacity to excel and to achieve more, but who are limited by uh, the schools in which uh, the schools are attending. Yeah, I mean, from our, from our perspective, we have long thought that School innovation and choice can be powerful levers to, to drive better opportunities for equity and excellence. Uh, we do not support voucher programs, and I think that that is a, um, an area in which I know there is some disagreement, even in this room, but uh, we certainly will implement the law with respect to the DC program. We will certainly implement uh, the opportunities for students in charters uh, that are a part of the law and the opportunity for students, uh, for school districts to design other versions of public school choice programs. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. I yield back. 